Um, there are two things we want to just ask. Um, one, there's a sign-in sheet on the table there next to the refreshment, so you cannot have a cookie until you signed in. No, I'm joking. But uh, if you could please make sure you sign in because uh, leaving your name and information is a form of communication, right? Because now you can have that back and forth. But also, uh, you have your pencils and your index cards there that you can put your questions on, okay? And one note about the index cards, I'm just gonna ask because there's a lot of people here tonight and there are, there's a lot of concern in this room. I see it in everybody's body language. So, in an effort to make sure that you can address as many of your questions as possible, I'm going to ask that we're paying attention. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm gonna ask that you're paying attention. And so if you have a question on your index card and someone before you has already asked it, you might have multiple questions. Maybe just go down to your second or third question, okay? Could you hear me? Okay. It's against state law to have a sign in sheet at a public meeting. Okay. Okay. They, would they don't have to sign up for anything if they want to. They can. If they don't want to, that's. But, and I thank you for that, for sharing that knowledge. And again, I'm just going to say they don't have to leave it if they don't want to, but if they do, that is the individual's liberty and right to do so, okay? Thank you so much. So, um, again, Faith B. Jagas, I'm going to be your moderator for tonight. Um, but prior to the full kickoff tonight, because I think you're about ready to get started, uh, I'm going to pass the microphone to my right to Officer Parks, and I will let her address you all as appropriate. Good evening. Thank you, Faith. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Sergeant Parks with the Bridgeport Police Department. I just want to lay down some ground rules and expectations for tonight so that we don't have another yesterday, okay? We have kids in the room, and we want to have an orderly meeting. So the way I think Faith gave you uh, the process, there's index cards over there. You're going to write your name, your question. Faith or someone else in the room will be walking around to gather those index cards. You're gonna, they will, in turn, give those index cards to the superintendent. She will read your question and answer the question. We want to adhere to the process. So there's not going to be any yelling, screaming, or any... Um, arguing, okay? If there is, you will be removed from the meeting. You will be asked to leave. Please adhere to the process so that everybody has an opportunity to ask their question and for it to be heard. Thank you. All right, good evening everyone. I'm Dr. Carmela Levy-David, and I'm the superintendent of Bridgeport Public Schools. I just wanna thank everyone for being here. I wanna thank you for um, being a full participant in this process. I wanna thank Dr. Carmen McPherson, our building principal over here in, in, in the back, for being here and for hosting us and for the wonderful work that she's done here at Edison. And I also wanna thank I'm sorry, at Hall. Yes, I, I, I slept and woke up and thought I was still at Edison. Sorry about that. So I want to thank her for the work that she's doing. I want to thank you all for being here. And I just want to share some critical information in order to give you a full um, detailed background on the reason that I have arrived at the recommendation to close several of our schools, including Hall Elementary. For some of you, this may be the first time that you have interacted with me, maybe the first time that you've seen me in person. And um, I've been in education for 28 years. I'm an immigrant, was born and raised in Panama. At age 12, my family immigrated to the US. I had to learn English, my first language is Spanish. And 
We moved to a community that was not particularly welcoming to immigrants or minorities. And so that was an additional barrier that I had to overcome in order to access education in the United States. Fortunately, through a lot of hard work and perseverance and parents who refused to give up, I'm able to stand before you today. It has taken my family 115 years and five generations to go from sugarcane farmers to executive level college educated individuals. Five generations, 115 years. As people of color, being successful in an educational setting is not a guarantee. As people of color, we face many barriers that for people who do not walk in our shoes, they could not possibly begin to understand the journey that we go through just to access a fair and equitable education. But the one thing that has remained consistent is that no matter where parents come from, they want what is best for their children. They want their children to always do better than they have. And they want their children to have things that are better than they had access to. That is every parent's desire. And I know that it is also your desire. I'm a mother and I share that desire. My great grandfather raised us with several principles. The first, get a good education. The second, upward mobility. Always seek to do better than your, the generation before you. And the third, self-determination. Don't let anybody tell you what to think. You have a brain, you're intelligent, use your mind, learn the facts, and follow your heart, and follow common sense. And that is something that I have lived by all of these years and has served me well. I moved here from Texas seven months ago. Seven months ago. That may seem like a big leap to a lot of people, but being an immigrant is not a big leap for me. Once you leave home, anywhere you go with your family is home. Connecticut is now my home. After 28 years in this craft, and after 28 years of working in low socioeconomic settings, in settings with poverty, in settings with immigrants, that's my passion. I am very, very passionate to be a disruptor of patterns that don't serve our kids. Very passionate about making sure that any school district where I work, I leave it better than I found it. I'm not planning on leaving anytime soon, but it shouldn't take me 10 years in order to create better learning environments for kids in Bridgeport. This school wasn't built yesterday. This school has been here since 1914. 1914. This school is over 90 years old. And at the time when it was built, I can tell that it was a beautiful facility. At the time when it was built, it was probably a state-of-the-art facility with all of the advantages of that time period of the new 20th century. But we are no longer in the new 20th century. We're actually two decades into the 21st century. And I don't know about you, but it's very difficult to focus and concentrate when it's hot. There's no way for us to regulate the temperature in this building because of the lack of mechanical ventilation. And there are a lot of other barriers that I see not only in Hall, but many of our other schools. Can I address all of those all at once? Of course not. It's going to be a process, just like this is going to be a process. And this is the beginning of this process in order to ensure that, first of all, I'll let you know what my intention is, because I lead through my intentions, and my actions are shaped by my intentions. My intention is to make sure that the board understands why my recommendation is to close six of the schools in this district over the next three years. And not because it's led by a frivolous desire to close schools, but because my goal is to transform the experience for every single Bridgeport child, no matter where you come from and no matter where you live. The quality of the education that your child receives should not rely on the zip code where they live. They're entitled to have the same quality education as any other child in the state of Connecticut. And I want you to think about a couple of things, because this is why I came here, right? People say, why do you come from Texas? You know, aren't there school districts in Texas? There are. 
But I very passionately, passionately believe then and believe now that this district needs to be transformed. People need someone with the experience, the acumen, and the relentless dedication to get this work done. I'm not going to quit through intimidation. I'm not going to quit because people follow me to my house. I'm not going to quit because people make noise. And I'm certainly not going to quit when I know that this is the right thing to do for kids. And that has been my story my whole life. So what I want to do now is to share with you a short presentation that relates to some of the barriers that we have at Hall. I know it's on our website, but I want to honor those of you who may not have had a chance to see it and ensure that you do. And before I move on, is there anybody that needs Spanish translation? Raise your hand. Right here? Okay. Let's see. Who do I have who's bilingual who can translate for me? I do speak Spanish. But I'm not going to engage in conversation with you. I'm not going to engage in conversation with you. We're not going to do that tonight. Tonight is not going to be a repeat of last night. Okay. Okay. So, excuse me for a moment. As your moderator, one of the things we talked about and we all agreed upon was that R word, which is what? Respect. Respect for yourself and respect for others in the room. I heard you. I understand your frustrations. I understand your frustrations and your concerns. Okay, I get it. We are all in an environment where the emotions are going to run high. We are not unaware of that fact. But what I am asking you all to do is, again, if you know you feel a way, the person next to you feels a way as well but give everybody a fair opportunity. The more disruption and interruptions you have, the less time you will have to ask questions and actually have your voices heard. You can yell, you can shout, the whole room will hear you, but will they respect you? Okay? Start with self respecting yourself. You, there may be rules in place that you may not like, that is fine. But let's start at a baseline level of respect for self, and respect for everyone else, okay? Can we all agree to that? One more time. Can we all agree to that? Yes, ma'am. You said yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Villegas. And I want to make something clear. I want the parents, anyone who has a child enrolled here at, at Hall, I want you to be able to have a voice tonight. We will not have a repeat performance of last night where parents remained unheard. I want parents to be heard tonight. So the mic is going to go with me, with Ms. Villegas, and I'm going to moderate those questions to make sure I'm able to get to every single one. I'll stay here as late as I need to. All right, let's get started. So the Rising Together for Better Schools initiative is exactly that, is a way for us to work together to develop better schools for our students in Bridgeport, to address the inequalities that we have in our schools, which no one would argue with, and to address the lack of quality facilities that we have in the city of Bridgeport and some of our schools for our kids. We have a proposed timeline, and it's a proposed timeline. The timeline is not set in stone. The proposed timeline outlines that three schools will close this year. Now, I would never give you a timeline and not include dates, because that's really nebulous, and we need to have some benchmarks for when we do things. So even though that says that by June these three schools will close, if I need to move that timeline off for a few months in order to allow this process to work the way that it's supposed to work, that's what we're going to do. There is no way that I intend to complete this process without having parental input and without having your thoughts and your feedback so that we know how best to work through this process not to add additional burdens and barriers to you and your children. So the timeline is a proposed timeline. It's a draft. So even though we have slated the recommendation to close Edison Hall and BLC by June of this year, we are going to move that timeline in the way that is necessary to ensure we're meeting everyone's needs. Okay. 
So I want to share a little bit of data because one of the things that we did, we, we took a very detailed approach at looking at what the data was saying about our building quality, about attendance, chronic absenteeism, about assessment results for our students. And then I asked some additional questions because I was concerned with the building quality when I walked the schools during my first week on the job in August. I asked some additional questions and I asked George Garcia's team to do an in-depth assessment of what was happening in these buildings. And I found that what they reported to me matched visually what I saw that I thought was just not okay. Okay, the condition of this building is not adequate for small and tender aged children. Simply not adequate. This building is what we call an end of life facility. It is now at the stage where the only thing to do is closure because the investment that would have to be made to bring this building up to code, one, is cost prohibitive, and two, it simply will still not meet the basic needs of our students. This building has a footprint. We're not going to demolish people's homes to make it larger, right? This building has a footprint. Everything that you see in this building, that's considered the footprint. It sits on half of a city block. But unfortunately, we don't live in a land-rich area. We're a very densely populated city. So the expansion that would be necessary to add the infrastructure that we want for our kids to have larger classrooms, classrooms are very small, is not available. Excuse me, just one second. I can do it. I can do it. I, I can do it. Sí. En resumen, este edificio está al fin del uso. Arreglar este edificio y añadirle todas las ventajas y todas las facilidades que esperamos que los estudiantes tengan costaría demasiado dinero. No hay el dinero para hacerlo y todavía no garante, no garante, no, no había ninguna garantía de que el edificio podría ser más grande, porque no tenemos amplio terreno para expandirlo, no tenemos el espacio para hacer estos salones más grandes, para tener un gimnasio más grande, simplemente no existe en este lugar. Y esa es la dificultad de vivir en una ciudad que tiene mucha, mucha población. Es difícil añadir ese espacio. Así que lo que queremos hacer, lo que estaba diciendo antes, es que tenemos un calendario para el cierre de tres escuelas este año. Pero la fecha es una fecha propuesta, no es una fecha fija. Vamos a hacer este proceso para que todos puedan informarse sobre todos los datos y puedan tomar unas decisiones y darnos información amplia y podamos tener conversaciones con los padres acerca de cómo les impacta este proceso para no crearles más barreras. Es lo que no queremos hacer. So I've taken the opportunity to include the SMART balance achievement for our students in the six schools that we're proposing for closure, but I'm only going to focus on Hall tonight. Hall School, the percentage of students meeting or exceeding for literacy is 10%. Percentage of students who've taken the assessment meeting or exceeding for math is 7%. And that is not a reflection on bad teaching. It's not a reflection on our fearless leader not doing her job. It's a reflection on the variety of barriers and the lack of resources that have been provided to support student learning over the past 10 years in the city of Bridgeport. When we had layoffs formally and budget cuts, we cut all of the infrastructure out of the district that supported learning. Teacher aides, instructional interventionists, social workers, counselors, and even teachers, and the list goes on and on and on. And we only brought back the bare minimum needed to function. That's all we brought back. Así que hace 10 años, 
Como ustedes ven, esas son las, las calificaciones en el examen estatal. En literatura, los estudiantes de esta escuela, solo 10% de ellos pasan el examen de lectura. Y en matemáticas, solo el 7%. Esos no son números que nos gustan a nosotros. Y no refleja el trabajo de los maestros, ni refleja el trabajo de la directora. Refleja las innumerables barreras que hemos puesto en pie cuando hemos cortado el presupuesto anteriormente, hace 10 años. Nosotros despedimos maestros, consejeros, trabajadores sociales, intervencionistas, también las asistentes en los salones para los maestros. Toda esa gente se despidió y solamente regresaron el mínimo para funcionar en el distrito. Pero ese mínimo no puede servir las necesidades de los estudiantes. Y los estudiantes les hace falta apoyo porque tienen muchas barreras que tienen ellos que sobrepasar para venir a esta escuela, ¿verdad? So, the many barriers that our students have to overcome just to arrive in school every day, we are not supporting them by not adding those additional resources. Only three years ago, through COVID, were we able to add counselors back to every school and social workers back to every school. So, tres años atrás, trajimos de vuelta consejeros para cada escuela y trabajadores sociales para cada escuela, pero nada más. This district does not have a balanced research-based curriculum. It does not exist. Students and teachers have to avail themselves of programs and textbooks to teach. We have not invested the funding in developing a research-based curriculum, and the teachers in the room can tell me if I'm lying, for our students. There's no curriculum that includes lesson plans and assessments for our students in this district, right? That presents a serious problem because it denies students the right of tier one instruction to learn. We are trying to remediate ourselves out of a tier one problem. We have students that are in continuous remediation, but they're not receiving primary instruction. And that is a formula for failure. And that is not the fault of the staff. That is the fault of the district for not moving forward with hiring the experts necessary to ensure that we have the same instructional resources as Trumbull or Shelton or Stratford or any of our neighboring districts that have those curriculums in place. No tenemos un programa curricular en este distrito a base de investigación, a base de poder proveer la instrucción primaria de calidad para cada estudiante. No existe. Usamos libros y usamos programas. Y como ustedes saben, la instrucción no se hace con libros y programas. Se hace con un currículo de instrucción basado en investigación. Y eso no existe en el distrito de Bridgeport. No se ha invertido para traer esos programas aquí a este distrito. No lo han hecho. Yo estoy aquí para hacer eso. I am here to make sure we invest in developing a research-based tier one curriculum for every student in the district. That is priority one that we're going to do to have it available by fall of this year. No child in this district will begin the school year without a tier one research-based curriculum. No teacher will deliver lessons without availing themselves of a research-based tier one curriculum in this district. We're simply not going to move forward because it's a formula for failure. And we are not going to be a school to prison pipeline on my watch. So here's the profile for Hall. Hall was built in 1914. It's never been renovated. School capacity is 385. We currently have 189 students in the building. Again, the academic achievement is low in this building. And this is not the only one, okay? And it is not the fault of our kids, because I talk to our kids and I see how brilliant they are. They are young problem solvers. They are creative, they're innovative, and they're very funny, okay? And so that's what you learn when you talk to our kids. They have so much to give, but it's our job to show them the path to success. Ahora, esta escuela se construyó en 1914, nunca ha sido renovada desde el siglo XX, gente. Nunca. La escuela acomoda 385 estudiantes, tenemos 189 en este momento, y los logros son muy bajos. Yo les puedo decir que los niños en esta escuela, yo he hablado con muchos de los niños en todo el distrito, son súper inteligentes, creativos, innovativos, saben resolver problemas, que es uno de los primeros síntomas, los primeros signos de inteligencia, poder resolver problemas. Ellos lo saben hacer. 
saben toda la tecnología, así que tienen la capacidad de aprender, pero hay que darles los recursos para enseñarles cómo sobrepasar todas las barreras que tienen y no lo estamos haciendo. We are not an ADA compliant building. That may not be significant to some people, but if you have a disability, if you are injured and every single entry has stairs, that's a barrier for coming to work or coming to school. We are not a building with ventilation. If you are someone with breathing problems or asthma, and this city has the highest proportion in New England of asthmatic students, this city, Bridgeport, the majority of the kids that pediatricians see in the city, they see for asthma, bronchitis, and chronic lung ailments. By us having students in a setting like this, we are setting them up to continue that cycle. We need to be able to ventilate the air. It doesn't help to have an air purifier when the air doesn't move. Everybody with me? Yeah. All right. We have asbestos in the floors and the piping. And our facilities department has done a great job of sealing those floors to ensure that asbestos doesn't get in the air. But there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees that we're not breathing that as we sit right here. We have an antiquated steam and heating system. And George Garcia will tell you, we can't replace the parts. Right, Mr. Garcia? The parts have to be built. We can't call a supplier and say, hey, I need a part for the heating system. We have to wait weeks for somebody to build it, fabricate it, and then ship it to us and hope that one of our installers is not out sick that day, right? That's where we are, people. Así que les voy a decir que este edificio no acomoda las necesidades de los impedidos. Si tienen algún impedimento, no pueden entrar aquí. Hay escaleras en todas las entradas. Hay escaleras para subir, bajar por todo el edificio. Es muy difícil funcionar en un edificio cuando uno se enferma, se lastima a los estudiantes, los que trabajan aquí y no pueden entrar al edificio. Hay asbestos. Ustedes saben que eso, eso causa cáncer. Asbestos en los pisos y también en todas las llaves, en todo el edificio. Y han sellado los pisos y sellado las llaves para prevenir que eso se disparza. Pero como ustedes saben, nada es seguro. Mejor prevenir que lamentar. Tenemos un sistema de calefacción anticuado. Las partes no existen porque fueron hechas para 1914. No hay ningún distribuidor que las lleva. Hay que mandarlas a hacer y hay que esperar que las personas aquí las, saben, las sepan instalar. Porque eso no es conocimiento del siglo XXI, es conocimiento del siglo XX. Y toma semanas. Así que son semanas de incomodidad para los estudiantes. También lo que les quiero decir, aunque tenemos nosotros purificadores de aire, como no tenemos ventilación mecánica, el aire no se mueve. Y si el aire no se mueve, todos estamos respirando las inhalaciones y exhalaciones de todo el mundo. Esa es la realidad en un edificio de esta edad. Solamente tenemos baños en el sótano. Todos los estudiantes, cuando tienen que hacer necesidades, tienen que ir al sótano para usar el baño. Eso no se encuentra en ninguna otra escuela moderna, solamente aquí. Y es difícil porque no podemos supervisar. Los niños, si estamos en el tercer piso, ellos tienen que ir al sótano, no hay supervisión. Y donde no hay supervisión, no hay seguridad. El sistema eléctrico es del siglo XX. No podemos acomodar más capacidad en el sistema eléctrico. Cada vez que alguien viene y enchufla algo que no pertenece, parte del edificio se queda en oscuridad. Ese es un problema grande. No tenemos llaves de agua para fuegos en este edificio. No existen. Ustedes pueden mirar, no existen, no se pueden instalar porque es un sistema de plumas anticuado. Así que si hay un fuego, tenemos que orar que todo el mundo no caiga en pánico y saque a los niños sanos y salvos de aquí. Y por último... El espacio adicional que tenemos que es para guardar cosas, una casita que está afuera para guardar cosas, también está completamente destrozado. Así que todo lo que tenemos aquí no funciona. So back to English. We don't have mechanical ventilation. I talked a little bit about that. The restrooms are only in the basement, which means that when students go to the restroom, and if we're short-staffed, we have students going to the restroom without supervision, and you know that's a safety concern. 
but that's the only place where we have a restroom. And we are frequently short staffed because we can't get substitutes in our most critical schools. Subs will not come. And that creates a problem because then we have to combine classes. So add that the room is already hot and now we have, instead of 15, we have 30 kids in the classroom because someone's absent, that's a serious concern. The electrical system is outdated and antiquated. It does not have the capacity, a capacity to accommodate any additional mechanical um, or any electrical machinery. Anybody plugs something in, it trips a breaker and we're in darkness. And then we have to reset it. That happens a lot. It happens a lot in old buildings. It happens a lot in, it happens in my house. My house was built in 1940 and it happens a lot in my house. So I know it happens. There are no fire sprinklers. Which means if we don't have fire sprinklers, guys, we have to rely on everybody understanding the safety plan to get us all out safe. There's no way to install fire sprinklers in a building of this age. And finally, we have a portable trailer that is past its useful life as well. It's fallen apart. I wanted to show you potentially where our students would be going from Hall Elementary. So we are scheduling, if you look at this map, this map shows you all of the different schools. This map shows you the proposed movements. Students from Hall would be going to Beardsley, Tisdale, and Marin, depending on their address. And every single parent would receive information. I'm gonna put this on the website. Every single parent would receive information based on their individual address and where their child would go so that you can then make some decisions about whether you need to talk to us because that's not gonna work for you or you're concerned about them going to a particular school, we want to make sure that we provide you with some options. And so I'm opening control transfers to all of the schools that are open enrollment schools in the district for that reason. The only caveat is that we don't have the funding to provide transportation for control transfers. We never have. We never have. But we will honor your request if you do not wish your child to go to the school that they have been assigned. Okay? And I know teachers want to know where they're going to go. There have been questions about whether or not teachers are going to follow their kids and go with their kids. That's a more complicated response, and here's why. We are going to be using our teacher capacity differently. Now that we're going to have a curriculum, we're also going to have different courses for students in grades 6 through 8. We're going to give our students high access to high school level curriculum, foreign languages, algebra 1, fine arts, theater, different sports. We want to ensure that we're actually preparing our kids for high school, which we haven't done. We're one of the few districts that has K-8 elementaries. And our kids, when they go to high school, it's a big trauma because they're going from a system of people really treating them like babies to a place where they're with young adults who are getting ready for adult life. So we want to make sure, you went through that? <laughs> I want to make sure that our kids have a bridge in middle school, which is what middle school is supposed to do, and that they can access credit-bearing courses in middle school. Imagine that. Students able to get their foreign language credit in middle school, their algebra credit in middle school, their finite credits and PE credits in middle school. We've never done that here. We need to be able to be 21st century schools. And in addition to that, we need to look at teacher certifications to see who can then adjust to those movements. And that's why I can't guarantee that teachers will go with their children because I'm gonna really rely on their certifications and expertise to support what the new program will look like at those schools that they'll be going to. Así que les quiero explicar. Esto les indica a ustedes las escuelas que tenemos aquí en este sistema, que son las escuelas que estamos cerrando, proponiendo cerrar, y las escuelas donde ellos van a ir. Los niños de Hall están pactados ir a Marín, ir a Beardsley, ir a Tisdale. En caso de que algún papá eso no le convenga, que vayan a una de esas escuelas por alguna razón, estoy abriendo el sistema de cambios. Si quieren cambiar una escuela distinta, lo pueden hacer. En cualquier escuela que tenga matrícula abierta. Si hay matrícula abierta, los pueden cambiar. 
La única excepción es que no puedo pagar transportación para todos los niños de matrícula abierta. Nunca lo hemos podido hacer. Son demasiados estudiantes. Así que contarle que los padres los puedan transportar, los pueden matricular en la escuela de su escogencia. Y eso lo vamos a apoyar. Porque nosotros estamos creando la inconveniencia al cerrar su escuela. La otra cosa, me preguntaron sobre los maestros. ¿Los maestros van a seguir a mi hijo a la próxima escuela? Esa respuesta es un poco más difícil porque estamos cambiando la experiencia de los niños del grado 6, 7 y 8. Estamos creando escuelas de secundaria, primer ciclo, para los estudiantes, para que se preparen para la escuela secundaria, segundo ciclo. Así que en el grado 6, 7 y 8 van a tener acceso a clases de secundaria, de álgebra, de idiomas, de bellas artes, de deportes, todo lo que no han tenido anteriormente en Bridgeport, que los niños se merecen. Eso. Somos uno de los pocos distritos en el estado de Connecticut que no ofrece eso. Y eso se forma una barrera nueva para los niños cuando van de la primaria a la secundaria sin ninguna clase de transformación, de acoplación, para que puedan estar listos para ese cambio. Es muy difícil para un niño acoplarse a ese cambio tan brusco. Así que queremos que ellos estén preparados para tener éxito en la escuela secundaria. Esos maestros que tenemos... Vamos a mirar su certificación para que nos ayuden con los cursos de secundaria a primer ciclo, si es que tienen ese certificado. Y si no lo tienen, vamos a hacer que ellos nos ayuden con tener dos maestros en el salón y con tener intervencionistas que pueden interferir con los niños que no están bien en sus clases, los que están luchando, los que tienen diferencia de aprendizaje y les hace falta más apoyo. Así que esa es mi visión para este cambio para poder prepararlos a ellos a tener éxito en la secundaria. I really want to ensure that we understand that there will be team teaching, intervention, in-school tutoring, and pull-out small group instruction, and we're going to need our teachers to help us with that because we owe it to our students to get them caught up. We cannot expect students with the scores that I showed you to be high school ready. And we want to set them up for success, not for failure. And that means that we're going to have to do some things uniquely differently to ensure that they have the support they need to get caught up. They have the capacity and the ability and the intelligence. We just need to provide them with the opportunity and the resources. And that's why we have all of these wonderful certified teachers in this district to help us with that. Let's talk a little bit about the financial impact. We are now in a position where ESSER funding is ending, and we have to find responsible ways of allocating our resources to ensure that we remain a viable, competitive district for the next 20 years. We cannot do that by doing the same things we've been doing. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. And we want to make sure that we're not crazy. So we're going to do some things differently. Currently, we spend on the six schools that I've discussed $24 million. By closing these six schools, we would have an annual savings of $7 million. Now, are we going to have that $7 million completely available? We're going to do some additional things that I'm going to talk about. Because a couple of those schools that are scheduled for closure, they still have a lot of life left in them. And so we want to provide programming that is sorely needed in this community. For example, Dunbar Elementary, thank you, ma'am. Dunbar Elementary would become an adult ed center, not only for our parents, but also for our students who did not have the opportunity to graduate. We want to make sure that we provide them with job training programs, certification programs, opportunities to get their GEDs, and opportunities to earn community college credit to be able to even work on an associate's degree in our program. We have the largest adult ed program in the state of Connecticut. I think that's a blessing. And I want to add advantages to that program for our adults because the more that we support our families, the more that trickles down to our kids. And so for me, it's smart for us to invest in the adults too, not just in the kids, but to take a family approach to solving this issue for generations to come. Queremos hacer cosas diferentes y más inteligentes con los recursos que tenemos. Tenemos que ser responsables fiscalmente. Y quiero tomar dos de las escuelas que proponí para cerrar, para hacer programas que hacen falta en esta comunidad. 
tomar Dunbar y hacerlo un centro de educación adulto para que puedan recibir sus diplomas, puedan tomar certificaciones, entrenamiento para trabajos y también que tengan acceso a empezar su carrera universitaria si es lo que quieren hacer. Tenemos estudiantes que no se gradúan, quiero que vayan al centro de adultos para continuar su educación, no estar en la calle, pero estudiar. Queremos cambiar la vida de todas las familias, empezar a hacer una clase media robusta para poder ayudar a nuestros estudiantes también. Y eso empieza ayudando a los adultos y a las familias. Así que ese es parte del plan. The other part is to take Cross Elementary and turn Cross Elementary into a specialized instruction center for our students with learning differences, newer diversities. Those kids that we're currently shipping out, there was a great article in the paper today, by the way, about how we've been shipping students all over the state for special ed and denying them services in the district. I want to stop that habit, that behavior, that culture We want to serve our kids right here in the district and not ship them all over the state for special ed. We have the ability to do that here. Many of you have students with learning differences, and you don't want to put them on a bus to Hartford or Hamden or Norwalk or any of these other towns. You want to keep them right here going to school with your other children. And I don't blame you. I would too. So we want to take that school and turn it into a very beautiful specialized instruction center. We've been visiting specialized instruction centers throughout the state to see how to better accommodate students with autism, with sensory rooms, students with physical difficulties, with occupational therapy, students with medical issues that we can accommodate by having trained staff on hand to help them with the feeding tubes if that's what they have. We don't want to send them out someplace else if we can accommodate them right here. And there's nothing that says that they cannot learn and they cannot be successful. They have every opportunity to learn and be successful, even though they have a learning difference. And we have to believe that in our soul about our kids. Queremos tener un centro de aprendizaje para los estudiantes con impedimentos, para que puedan tener oportunidades aquí en el distrito, en lugar de mandarlos a escuelas en otras partes del estado, como ha sido la costumbre y la cultura en este distrito. Y hace falta tener programas que acomoden a niños con autismo, con disabilidades físicas, médicas, aquí en el distrito, para no ponerlos en un bus, para ir a otra ciudad, que es lo que hemos estado haciendo. Todo padre cree que sus hijos pueden. Tengan o no tengan impedimentos, pueden. Me hace falta que ustedes también lo, lo crean en su corazón, que ellos pueden, y tenemos que hacerlo aquí, no darle a otra persona la responsabilidad de ayudar a nuestros hijos. I'm going to take a break at this moment, a restroom break, and then we'll continue the presentation, and then we'll take questions. Vamos a tomar un, un breve, breve receso, 10 minutos, para los que les haga falta el baño o les haga falta eh, tomar un receso, que es que tenemos niños con nosotros. Y continuaremos la presentación y tomaremos preguntas. I know. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, take a couple of minutes to go to the bathroom, get refreshments, and we'll get back back.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and, and renew and wrap this up so that we can take questions. The last part of this that I want people to know. And, and you know what? No. Faith. Faith, I hear you. Faith, I hear you. But I'm going to go through this information. I respect your opinion. No, I, it's not my opinion. You brought these people out here to a form. I know. You wanted to hear their voice. And I'm saying to you, they are restless. Faith, they feel I like got they're it. Not going to get Faith, it. I got it. It's almost, what time is it? But I'm getting to feedback from them too. That's not what I'm hearing. No, it's on parents. It's on parents. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let you continue, but as I said, I, I, I get it. Okay, so if we move forward, I wanted people to know that we will not be having any layoffs this school year. No se van a despedir a ningún maestro, ninguna clase de personal este año. Todo el mundo va a estar aquí con su trabajo fijo y vamos a honrar el contrato. Y por final, si tienen preguntas, quieren ad detalles adicionales, por favor, escaneen este eh, código para poder tener acceso a ellas. No van a haber, de, ninguna persona se va a despedir del personal del distrito. I'm going to go ahead and start with questions at this time. How will you ensure the safety of children with special needs? And how will you accommodate that transition for children? Any student with special needs, we are going to have the utmost care in making sure that parents are highly informed about exactly where their programs, what school they're going to be, where they have a chance to visit. And we will also provide transportation for our students with special needs, as we always have when there's a specific need for that child to have transportation. So I don't want you to worry about how special needs kids are going to be taken care of. They are definitely our number one priority. They have a federal right to the accommodations and resources that we provide for them, and we want to make sure that those are never violated. Los niños que tienen impedimento, ¿cómo se va a acomodar su seguridad y, en, eh, y asegurar que tengan una transición efectiva? Vamos a, me, a, a asegurar que los padres estén bien informados de dónde se va a mover el programa de los estudiantes, a qué escuela. Si necesitan transporte, van a tener transporte. Y también vamos a tener un sistema de acoplación para ellos para que se puedan acomodar en la escuela nueva, puedan visitar la escuela nueva. We want them to be able to visit the new setting, the new school, and to be able to have an opportunity to onboard themselves into that new school, not have a sudden transition that would be um, not beneficial for our students. Question is, where is the required closing school study, which most study specific areas, including transportation, utilities, property values, um, imp impacted by school closures? Policy 300 requires the school building committee to issue a final report to every parent before submitting to the school board. Absolutely right. There will be a school closing committee. There will be a study, formal study, through a company that does studies. We are working with several other school districts in the state that have conducted closures in order to ensure that we are following not only state law, but our own internal policy. So I don't want people to worry that we're not going to honor or follow school district policy. That is not what we're about here in Bridgeport. La pregunta, ¿cómo vamos a asegurar que sigamos los procedimientos de las pólizas del distrito y que tengamos un comité de, cerrado, de cierre para las escuelas? ¿Y cómo vamos a asegurar que tomemos la oportunidad de estudiar áreas específicas como transportación, como eh, la, la, las utilidades, como agua, electricidad y también tener un reporte final? Estamos en este momento contratando una compañía que se encarga de esos estudios, que ha trabajado con varios otros distritos en el estado de Connecticut para que hagan el mismo estudio aquí y nos den el, fin, el reporte final. Y también vamos a tener un comité de cierre. Todas esas cosas van a pasar. No vamos a violar ni una sola póliza del distrito. Así que no tienen que preocuparse por esa parte. La parte legal, tenemos muchos abogados que se encargan de esa parte. Kind of in the same category. 
How long has it been known that schools were not ADA compliant? The ADA law went into effect in 1990, so over 30 years we have not been ADA compliant in this particular building. Some of our schools that are older have been updated and renovated in order to address that. Because of the age and condition of these buildings, we're not able to do a similar, similar renovation. ¿Cuánto tiempo se ha sabido que las escuelas no acomodan la ley de impedimento? La ley se pasó en el año 990, más de 30 años atrás. Así que desde ese entonces, estas escuelas no han cumplido con la ley. Hemos hecho renovaciones a otras escuelas que también son un poco viejas, pero estas escuelas, por la condición de los edificios, no se pueden renovar. Y ese es, ese es el reto que tenemos. Tenemos que cumplir con la ley, pero no podemos renovar estas, estos edificios por la condición de los edificios. What will happen to the building once it is closed? Why wasn't the building ever updated? Why was this community failed? The buildings are managed by the school district, but they're owned by the city. So we have a procedure for closing buildings that has been enacted since the closing of Harding High School because that didn't go very smoothly. And we're going to be following those procedures. Our facilities department is in charge of that. And we've already begun the process of assessing what will be needed to ensure we have a smooth closure should it be approved. Um, why wasn't the building ever updated? Because the facility conditions made it cost prohibitive. If we invested 30 million into this building, we would only be scratching the surface of the changes and updates that are needed. Because we're talking plumbing, new construction, and we still would not be up to the school building codes for schools in the 21st century. And why was this community failed? Well, I'm not here to assign blame. I'm a leader and a problem solver. I'm not here to finger point at my predecessors or at anyone. I think there's a great deal of dysfunction in the city of Bridgeport that has led us to where we are today. And we all have to own our part in that dysfunction. We all have to own our part in that process if we live in this city. My role as your leader is to address it, to problem solve through it, and to help move us forward into the 21st century. That's my only goal here. ¿Qué pasa con las escuelas una vez que se cierran? Las escuelas se manejan por el distrito, pero son la propiedad de la ciudad. Se revierten a la ciudad. Tenemos nosotros un proceso de cierre que se implementó después del cierre de la escuela Harding, porque ese cierre no se hizo con conciencia y con responsabilidad. ¿Por qué este edificio no se ha renovado? ¿Por qué este edificio, específicamente con los retos de este edificio, este plantel, es demasiado costoso. Si invertimos 30 millones en esta escuela, todavía no la tendríamos a la altura de escuelas del siglo XXI, desafortunadamente. Así que no se puede invertir esa clase de dinero, es mejor construir una escuela nueva. ¿Y por qué se fracasó esta comunidad? Les voy a decir que yo sé que en Bridgeport ha habido mucha instabilidad en todas las índoles. Es una comunidad que ha sufrido de muchos cambios. Yo soy una líder, no estoy aquí para señalarle a nadie ni echarle la culpa a la gente, porque eso no es productivo. Y al fin y al cabo, ¿quién va a revisar esa historia? Estamos aquí para encontrar soluciones y movernos al futuro para todos los estudiantes. Why was the communication not done early with BOE members, parents, and community. Well, I just got here August the 1st of last year. I've been here seven months. And so I had to do a great deal of studying, researching, evaluating data, and assembling a team with the capacity to move us forward. That takes months. Once we assessed and saw all of the areas where we needed to grow, I ensured that I met with our executive board to address with them the sore need that we had to make these recommendations. This information was brought to the community once it was ready. I will never bring information to you before it is ready because then I can't answer your questions. So I hope that answers that question. ¿Por qué no se comunicó esta información temprano con los miembros de la junta directiva, con los padres y con la comunidad? Yo llegué aquí en agosto primero del año pasado. Tengo siete meses aquí. Tuve que hacer muchos estudios, contratar un equipo con la capacidad de este trabajo y estudiar a fondo los problemas y tener una recomendación fijada en los datos antes de traérselas a ustedes. Nunca les voy a traer nada 
sin tener las respuestas listas para ustedes. Okay. Question, will all kids be placed in the same school? Kids do have trouble making friends. Don't you think that will affect learning? I absolutely think that it would be nice to be able to have all students from Hall at the same school. However, that is not a possibility. Some of the students will have to go to different schools because we have to go where we have space available, teachers available, and resources available to provide you with the best possible education. Although you'll be going to different schools, you're not changing your community where you live, so you'll still be able to see the friends that live in this community. There'll be some friends that you won't see as often, and I get that, and I understand that. And that's something that we're going to have to work with you to support you through and overcome together. Change is very difficult. Changing schools is very difficult. And I completely understand personally how difficult that can be because I went through it myself. But the thing that got me through was the love of my family and knowing that I always had their support and knowing that I always had the capacity to love meeting new people. We have some extremely amazing individuals at the schools where you will be going, and you will love meeting them and making friends with them and playing sports with them and learning with them and being in clubs with them. I can guarantee you that. ¿Por qué eh, van a estar todos los niños en la misma escuela? Los niños tienen problemas a veces haciendo nuevas amistades y no cree usted que eso les va a afectar al aprendizaje. Y la respuesta es, sabemos que todos los niños no pueden ir a la misma escuela, porque hay que ir donde tenemos plazo para los niños para acomodarlos, donde tenemos los maestros para servirles. Y queremos que los niños estén cómodos. Sabemos que les afecta los cambios. Yo lo he sufrido personalmente. Para mí lo que me ayudó fue el amor de mi familia y la habilidad de poder tener maestros que me apoyaran en la nueva escuela. Conocer nuevos amigos, para mí fue una bendición. Participar en deportes, en clubs, en actividades y aprendizaje con nuevos amigos, para mí siempre fue una bendición. Vamos a tener nuestras amistades todavía en nuestro vecindario. Y ya vamos a tener contacto con ellos, pero también vamos a tener amistades nuevas. Y los vamos a apoyar durante esa transición a todos los niños. One of the reasons I love Hall School is because a lot of smaller classes. My son took a long time to adjust. The close attention and attentiveness some teachers made him feel more comfortable and better. With all kids going to a bigger school, I'm concerned they won't be able to get the same one-to-one -one contact with teachers. Big classes, big classrooms can be intimidating for some students. Great question. The goal is to have a maximum 22 to 1 teacher to student ratio. And some of those classes will have more than one teacher or a teacher with an interventionist or a teacher with another professional to help students with learning. And so we're not only going to have very adequate settings, but we're also going to have additional adult support to build those relationships with kids. And I can tell you, in order to address the learning differences of our kids, rigor, relationships, and relevance are critical. Relationships are one of the most important things. And I can tell you that our teachers are dedicated to building those relationships. Going to a new school doesn't mean your child is going to go to a larger class. Going to a new school means that they're going to have an opportunity to make new friends, meet new teachers, and have additional support that we don't currently provide on this campus. Pregunta. Una de las razones por la cual adoro esta escuela es porque tiene clases más pequeñas. Mi hijo tomó mucho tiempo en acoplarse y la atención de los maestros lo hizo sentirse más cómodo y con todos los niños que van a ir a una escuela más grande, me preocupa que no va a tener la misma atención con los maestros, el mismo contacto con los, ante, los maestros uno a uno. Clases grandes pueden ser intimidantes para los niños. Yo entiendo que eso es una consideración, pero el que vayan a una escuela distinta no significa que van a escuelas que tengan eh, salones más llenos. Vamos a tener un cupo de 22 estudiantes a un maestro, con maestro adicional, ayudante adicional, para poder hacer grupos más pequeños y hacer mucha capacitación con los niños para que sigan adelante. Van a tener una oportunidad de, te de tener amigos y amistades nuevas. 
Así que quiero que lo vean de la manera positiva, los vamos a apoyar, los maestros se van a dedicar a construir esas relaciones y, y vamos a continuar a apoyar a nuestros estudiantes para que salgan adelante. Superintendent keeps highlighting test scores of the schools that are closing. Where are the test scores for the schools where the kids are being transferred to? We can provide those test scores as well. That's not a problem. We'll place those on the website so that you can have those test scores available. We're not trying to hide anything from you. What I'm saying to you is that the way that we have functioned up until now no longer works for our district and no longer works for our kids. We want to move them to a better situation and make changes that make sense. And I understand that those changes are going to be difficult for some people to adjust to, and we will continue to support you through that process. Please know that we care. Please know that this is not being done without any consideration for your feelings and the feelings of your students. La, la pregunta es, la superintendente sigue dándonos los resultados de, de los exámenes de las escuelas que están cerrando. ¿Dónde están los resultados de las, de las escuelas donde los niños van a ser transferidos? Le vamos a poner los resultados de esas escuelas en la página de web, al igual que estos resultados también. No estamos escondiendo nada, estamos tratando de transformar este distrito y darle mejores oportunidades a los estudiantes. Y los vamos a seguir apoyando. A nosotros nos importa que los niños se sientan bien y que ustedes se sientan seguros con este cambio. Oh, this one's a good one. How will children get home after tutoring if they don't have transportation? Again, if students are not within walking distance of their home, we are actually had a meeting yesterday with Wakeman Boys and Girls Club. They want our students to go to the Boys and Girls Club after school for tutoring. And so we're going to explore new partnerships with all of the organizations. This is a very resource and opportunity rich city. We have a lot of organizations that want to serve our kids. We're going to establish more partnerships with them to ensure that we do have things like transportation for our kids that go to tutoring. They'll keep your kids until 8 p.m. So that will be a win-win for us in the district. Don't let the lighthouse people hear me. But that will be a win-win for us in the district, and we plan to explore that as well. ¿Cómo los niños que tengan tutoría después de la escuela, cómo van a llegar a la, a la casa sin transportación? Estamos trabajando para poder acomodar los niños que no tengan transporte para darles transporte después de la escuela. Estoy en conversaciones ahorita con el Boys and Girls Club de Wakeman para hacer un programa, esperar un programa de tutoría después de la escuela con ellos. Ellos tienen a los niños hasta las 8 de la noche, 8 de la noche en su programa. Y si podemos hacer el transporte con ellos, eso va a ser una oportunidad muy grande para los niños. Que ustedes no tengan que preocuparse si están seguros y están aprendiendo y tienen tutoría después de la escuela. Así que más información les voy a dar mientras terminamos ese proceso de planificación con ellos. Why is Winthrop being rebuilt and the student brought back and hall being closed forever? George, do you want to address why Winthrop is being rebuilt? I want to make sure they get accurate information about Winthrop. Good evening. So Winthrop's being rebuilt. The difference between Winthrop and this site is that we have the acreage needed. So whenever you're going to apply for a school construction grant, there are certain qualifications that you have to get through, right? So there's a checklist. One of those is the size of the site. You've got to be able to put playscapes, parking, and all those other amenities that are very important for a 21st century school. Unfortunately, due to the size of the site, we can't do the same here. You know, we'd have to take it down. There'd have to be eminent domain like we've done in past, like Marin School and other schools to expand the site. So that's the reasoning why, why we're rebuilding Winthrop and we can't rebuild Hall. Así que lo que acaba de decir el señor Jorge es que la escuela Winthrop cuenta con mucho terreno para poder acomodar, no solo reconstruir, pero expandir esa escuela. Y esta escuela simplemente, como les dije antes, no tiene el campo ni el espacio para hacer eso y no hay el dinero para hacer las reparaciones necesarias con un edificio de esta edad. Así que por esa razón esta escuela tiene que cerrar, pero la escuela Winthrop sí tiene campo para poder expanderla y reconstruir una gran parte de la escuela. It's a great question. Any more, Faith? Uh, kind of along the same line uh -huh. about what's going to happen with the building. I don't know if that's a question. We already talked about that. Yeah, we already talked about that. And this one is uh, Yeah, we already did. 
with that. Okay, I'll address this one because I want to make sure everybody heard me. Does my kid have to go to Tisdale Marine or Bearsbury, or can we choose a different school? You absolutely can choose a different school using a control transfer as long as that school has open enrollment. The only challenge is that we will not be providing transportation for open enrollments because we currently don't and we don't have the capacity to do that. Um, that is something that I would love to be able to explore in the future, but unfortunately, we do not have the funds to provide transportation for control transfers. As you know, we have a fairly large city and a fairly large district, and it simply would not be um, something that we could accommodate with all of the routes. Mi hijo puede, eh, tiene que ir a Tisdale Marino Bearsley o puede escoger una escuela distinta. Si sí pueden escoger una escuela distinta, vamos a abrir traslados a otras escuelas con tal de que tengan matrícula abierta para que puedan matricular a sus hijos en esa escuela si escogen. La única barrera es que no vamos a proveer transportación para traslados de matrícula abierta. Nunca lo hemos hecho, es parte de la póliza, no podemos hacerlo porque el costo es muy alto y nos prevenía darle servicios a los estudiantes como queremos. Joseph has a letter that he wants. Is Joseph still here? Joseph, did you want to read your letter or did you want me to read it? Okay, I'll read it for you. Dear Superintendent, I don't like that you're shutting down Hall School and I have a lot of friends here and I will also miss the teachers. I... I don't like that they will have to go to a different school from Joseph. Joseph, I appreciate your letter and I thank you for expressing your feelings. I really honor and value your feelings and I will definitely make sure that we support you through this transition, whatever the result and decision is, and that I continue to visit with you personally so I can see how you're doing in your next school, okay? El niño pregunta, El niño dice, superintendente, me mandó una carta, superintendente, querida superintendente, o estimada superintendente, no me gusta que van a cerrar mi escuela hall, tengo muchos amigos aquí y voy a extrañar mucho a las maestras. Me hace falta saber por qué tengo que ir a una escuela distinta de Joseph. Y le acabo de explicar a Joseph que yo entiendo y quiero que él sepa que a mí me importan mucho los sentimientos de él, que los está expresando, los felicito por expresarlos. Vamos a trabajar con Joseph para apoyarlo en esta transición. Se decida lo que se decida y yo lo voy a visitar en su próxima escuela para ver cómo le sigue en su nueva escuela. Next letter. This one is from... Vesania. Is it Vasanya? Did you want to read it? You want me to read it? I'll be happy to do that. March 13, 2024. Dear Superintendent, you want to close Hall School? I must have heard wrong. Our school is awesome. I have the best friends and amazing teachers. Please do not close our school from Vasanta. Vasanta. Thank you so much to you and Joseph for taking the time to write to me. Your feelings are really important to me, and I understand that change is difficult, especially at your age with the relationships that you've built and the friendships that you've built with your teachers. We will continue to check up on you to see how you're doing. We're going to continue to support you through this transition as well to make sure that you're okay. Thank you, Vasanta. Took a lot of courage to write me. Thank you. Basanta dice, querida superintendente, ¿quiere cerrar mi escuela? Debe haber oído mal. Nuestra escuela es estupenda. Tengo los mejores amigos y los mejores maestros. Por favor, no cierre nuestra escuela de Basanta. Le acabo de explicar a ella, primeramente, felicitándola por tener todo el valor de escribir esta carta en todo este público, que debe tomar... Mucho, mucho, mucho valor para un niño hacer eso. Y también le acabo de explicar que yo entiendo que las transiciones son difíciles y que la vamos a apoyar en esta transición y siempre la vamos a estar ahí con ella en su esquina apoyándola.
you want to you want to close? Uh, I, yeah, I just want okay. to. So, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so the superintendent. Uh oh, never mind. We're not done just yet. What's your name, sweetie? Said Lada. Ashani. Hello, Ashani. Ashani says, I don't want to let go of Hall School just yet. It's the best. Please don't close Hall School. Ashani, thank you for being so brave. Thank you for writing. Thank you for expressing your pride in your school. I think that that's amazing. And it's part of the thing that makes you so special to each of us here tonight. And I want you to please continue to express yourself. Please continue to be brave and share your feelings with everyone because that's part of the process of change is expressing how we feel about it. So thank you for doing that. We're going to keep supporting you, okay? Ashani dice, desde Ashani, no quiero, no quiero soltar esta escuela todavía. Es, la mejor, es el mejor lugar, por favor, no cierre mi escuela. Y le acabo de explicar que la felicito por tener el valor de expresarse, que parte del proceso del cambio es la expresión y que la vamos a seguir apoyando. Okay. Okay. So, can we all give a round of applause for Superintendent Levy David? But can you also give yourselves a round of applause? Because a little birdie told me that this was the best forum so far. No, I'm just joking. But I, I will go on record. I'm just going to be honest. I will go on record and say that. Um, I will go on record and say I am Bridgeport true and through. Yes, I said true and through. Been here 40 years. So I am proud of everyone in this room for showing up for yourselves and for your families and for your community. So again, a louder round of applause for you. So as we started tonight, what time are we ended tonight, Tim? Seven or 7.30? Seven? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, so what I would like to do, what, excuse, what I, what I would like to do, what I would like to do, what I would like, excuse me, thank you. Okay, so here's two things, okay, because I am Bridgeport too. I can do all of that or I can do this. So I'm asking us to do one of two things. We can either listen or we can leave. We're at the closing point. This is important. For all of you in this room, the Board of Ed members, the superintendent, the staff, the parents, the students, the educators, the taxpayers, the officers, we are all here tonight for one purpose. For those of you who came in the room before the rest of everybody filled in, what was one of the questions I led with? And I said, as we think about tonight, what should be the center focus? What about the... Thank you. So what about the kids? But before I, you all answer that, before we leave tonight, I just want to ask. We have a lot going on in the room. You saw the parent that walked out, right? You even saw the superintendent and I speaking, right? You witnessed body language, because I'm transparent, so I'm going to speak on it. She and I did not agree on everything. She stood her ground. I stood my ground. She has a right to do that. I have a right to do that. And every last one of you in this room has a right to do that, OK? Don't let anyone tell you differently. And with that right, what I want to do is, again, come back and take your temperature. Because you saw the presentation. You've been getting information. You've been talking to each other, right? One of my parents over here, she said, the elephant in the room right now is frustration. Any other elephants in the room? Unheard. Unheard. Communication. OK. What one? Communication? Thank you. Oh, you know what? It would go a bit easier if I had two scribers. How about that? Tim? All righty. Here you go. Tim, I need some more paper. We're going to get this going tonight. I'm sorry, Superintendent. 
You can, please. Thank you, so I'll slow down. Help. Kids help. So, hold on. Can, can we hear her? She talked about a really important concern for her, and we want to give you all the same opportunity. That means one voice at once, okay? So you discuss your child's health, okay? I'm not going to discuss everything you said, but health, okay? Uh, but I also hear in that um, you would have liked to have known that this was a problem, right? So can we talk about miscommunication? Because we have communication here, but there's some miscommunication, right? What else? Integrity. Integrity, transparency. Tim, I need you to jump in right here where you can, okay? Integrity, transparency. What else did we hear? What, one voice? Because I can't hear you. I see her hand up, and when I, I want to ask for questions, I'm going to ask you to come up and ask your question. Right now, I'm asking a question to the full audience about what is the elephant in the room right now? Getting, getting their voices out here, what they're extremely frustrated about. So the next time you all come together, you can have a deeper conversation. The back and forth, the arguing, the yelling, and the screaming is never going to get you where you need to be. So you can be an advocate. You can consider yourself a community leader. You can do all of those things. But once you have lost the respect of those who you are seeking to lead, you will lose them. OK? OK? So elephant in the room, voice of the parents. Is that all? Does this kind of wrap up your list? You, you, have a, you have an elephant in the room. What is your elephant in the room? The language. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. But when something is said in Spanish one way, but it wasn't said the same way in English. Lo que se estaba diciendo en español de una manera y que no se lo estaba traduciendo la misma manera en inglés. Okay. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hey. No. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one thing. You can, you can go, you can win a couple of battles, right? You can win a couple of battles. But will you ever win the war if you're ill-prepared? Yes or no, people? You can win a war ill-prepared? You lose the war. Now is your time to get prepared. So, Leslie, you indicated that communication was a problem because the way things were translated in English and Spanish was a, tr a problem. Here, we have communication as an elephant in the room. So let's, again, put additional check mark because you, as a community member or a parent, raised your voice and told us this is an elephant in the room for you, okay? So my attempt tonight as your moderator is to actually, I'm sorry, one, did you have a? One last one, and we want to wrap this up because we don't want to get charged for being here past our time.
your time. I'm sorry, you said, what's your name? My name is Maria. Maria. Maria said, Maria. Four members, right? There's a division between our four members, and I believe that it's created for the black women. Well, 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 let's not get into it. I know. I know. But you said what you believe. I want you to tell me what's the elephant in the room. So I can hear you. I believe you're saying. I believe that you're saying that I divide the community and make the four members of the black community. Okay, so can I leave you there? Because I have a young person here that wants to say something and crack the whole down. Okay. Is it done, you know? I'm hungry. I would like to say a few words about hospital. Ever since I went to hospital, it was like home. I felt safe there. It's the best school I ever went to, and I don't want to let it go ever. Oh, okay, you done? You done? Okay. So, um, yeah, let's give her a round of applause. Well, she just stole my thunder. No, I'm joking. But um, we have some superstars in our schools that are coming up and rising through our buildings, so this is going to be wonderful. So in closing, what I'd like to do, as I've said to you earlier, the elephants in the room, from you as the community, not the superintendent, but from you, you are frustrated. A lack of communication or miscommunication or misinterpreting facts, okay, is, how, is what's frustrating you your kids' health, and not being told about some of the conditions of the building. Integrity, we need it. It's important, right? Transparency, how do we get the information that we need to know in the time that we need to know it? Is that kind of hitting on the point? Okay. Voice of the parents. I'm going to go so far as to call you all stakeholders. You're not just parents. You live in the community. You pay taxes. You want your voices to be heard, so that means you want to be a part of the process. Got it. Division between the superintendent or the schools and the BOE, your elected board of education. So I'm going to share this with, well, it's actually going back to the district because it is my hope I don't know if I'll be your moderator again. I might get fired from my job uh, being a moderator, but it is my hope that you all can use this to censor yourselves so you can get to the deeper issues, but also find your way to the solutions. Find your way to have civil conversation and be able to talk and be heard and also affect change at the same time because isn't that what you want? Okay, so again, the superintendent will get that. I think my job is done for the night. Thank you for your support. And here's the superintendent. I just want to thank everyone for being here tonight. And I want to share that this is just our first meeting. We're going to have several more meetings where you will have an opportunity to share your thoughts. We're going to have Zoom meetings for those who aren't able to get inside this building because it's not ADA compliant. And we're gonna ensure that we continue to gather feedback from you, especially once our, um, our process gets going. So I don't want you guys to panic and feel this will be the only time you'll be able to be heard. Thank you for sharing your thoughts tonight. I appreciate you guys. Have a good night.